What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahoney here with Darium's Competitive Pokemon. As you may or may not know, Sun and Moon Burning Shadows pre-releases took place this past weekend. And because of that, Darium was able to crack a few boxes of the newest set, Sun and Moon Burning Shadows. What I have done is I have taken the supporter cards from the set, and I'm going to be ranking them from 1 to 8. There are 8 supporters in this set, and I think some of them are going to be very, very game-changing and meta-defining, while others maybe not so much. So, let's take a look. I've ranked them from best to worst, and we're going to start with what I consider to be the worst supporter in Sun and Moon Burning Shadows. So, the worst supporter, I think, is Wick. Now, if we read Wick, it says each player counts the cards in their hand, shuffles those cards into their deck, and then draws that many cards. When you first look at it, this doesn't seem that bad, right? I mean, if you have an eight card hand, I mean, Wick could allow you to shuffle, draw eight cards, which is a very powerful effect. However, my reasoning for putting Wick at the bottom of the pile is because Wick is only useful at certain parts of the game. So Wick is going to be most useful maybe at the beginning of the game, maybe after you've big wheel GX'd, right? But it's not going to be useful throughout the entire game. In fact, if you play your whole hand down, right, usually you want your supporter to be the last card that you play out of your hand. Maybe you ultra ball a few cards away, play a couple of item cards. Your hand dwindles as you play the cards in it. Then you're going to use your supporter to try and refresh your hand. And Wick just doesn't allow you to do that. If you play your hand down, you cannot refresh it with Wick. And that's my main issue with Wick. Also, Wick will never draw you out of an end to one, end to two scenario, which is really what you want your supporter cards to do, especially your draw cards. So Wick just seems very, very underpowered to me. I don't see this being a super competitive card or a card that really makes its way into many decks, unless maybe you could pair it with Octillery so that Wick could always shuffle draw five because Octillery will always, always refresh your hand to five with that Abyssal Hand ability. Maybe it could see play in a deck like that, um, but I just, I'm just not really seeing it. So Wick for me is at the bottom of the pile at that number eight spot for the eighth best supporter in Sun and Moon Burning Shadows. Up next, we have Sophocles. Sophocles is this little ginger boy who is, I guess, one of the uh, one of the totem leaders in the Sun and Moon games. And the effect of this supporter card is discard two cards from your hand. If you do, draw four cards. I like Sophocles. Well, excuse me. I like Sophocles more than Wick because Sophocles guarantees you to draw some cards. Now, you do have to discard two cards from your hand in order to draw those four cards. So again, its drawing capabilities are very limited. You have to have at least two cards in your hand to discard in order to draw four cards. And really, for discarding two cards, draw four is not a very powerful effect. I think draw cards like Lily really just outclass Sophocles because if you have a two card hand, you can draw four with Lily. Lily also has that ability to draw till eight on the first turn of the game, if you play it then, I think Lily just outclasses Sophocles in most situations. Maybe a deck crops up that it will be useful to discard cards from your hand. Maybe Metagross could use Sophocles to discard metals so that Metagross GS, GX can then accelerate them with its ability. But I really just don't see Sophocles being that powerful of a supporter. Now, there are some good supporters in this set that I think we'll see more play. Maybe Sophocles makes its way into something just because it does have the synergy there of being able to discard. And some decks do like to have things in the discard. However, just not super impressed with Sophocles from the start. And that's why I've placed it at the seventh best supporter in Burning Shadows. Number six, we have Lana. All right, so I actually didn't even know that this was a supporter in the set. I had never heard of it uh, before actually just searching through the bulk here that Darium had lying around from the boxes that he ripped. But uh, I actually even misread the card the first time I read it. I originally had Lana at the bottom of my list because I read 
heal 50 damage from a Pokemon that has a water energy attached to it, and thought that it was explicitly just a worse Pokemon Center lady. I was actually really mad that this card even existed. But then I read it again and saw that it actually says heal 50 damage from each of your Pokemon that has any water energy attached to it. And when I look at it at that light, it can heal all of your Pokemon in play that have water energy attached to it. So this is an inherently kind of powerful card. I mean, it could be used to heal lots of damage from your water type Pokemon. And, you know, I could see it functioning in some sort of water box deck, maybe Greninja, maybe uh, Ninetales, right? Some sort of deck that tanks hits. And then it also has synergy with Manaphy because Manaphy allows you to have that free retreat and just switch water Pokemon easily from one to another. So I could just see Lana seeing some playability in these water decks. And there isn't really a point of comparison for Lana. There is that fresh water set that heals 20 damage from all your Pokemon. It's an item. And I think that Lana is just a little more powerful than that. So there's really only, you know, that. And then there's Champions Festival is the other card in format. It's a stadium. Heals 10 damage from all your Pokemon if you have, uh, you know, once per turn, if you have a full bench. So those are kind of the points of comparison for Lana. And Lana's pretty powerful. You know, if, you, if you're able to maybe have some sort of deck that spreads your damage out, maybe, you know, down the road, some sort of Alakazam effect comes into play in a standard that can move damage counters around, and then you can heal them all off with Lana or something like that. I could just imagine Lana being, you know, a powerful supporter. It has a powerful effect, and maybe it will find its niche somewhere. That being said, it's not the most busted supporter ever. You know, it's not going to see play in a variety of decks. It really only fulfills one niche, and we're not even sure if that niche is going to be required. So for that reason, I've placed Lana at the sixth best uh, supporter in Sun and Moon. So let's let's actually arrange them this way. So that way, the sixth best supporter in Sun and Moon Burning Shadows. So. Up next, number five, we have Olivia. Olivia, I chose for number five above Wick, Sophocles, and Lana just because of its utility. I mean, it could see play in most decks. The effect is, search your deck for up to two Pokemon GX, reveal them, and put them into your hand. Then, shuffle your deck. So, Olivia could be used to get maybe like a Drampa, and a Tapu Lele, right? And then they go to your hand, unlike Bridget, they go to your hand so you could play the Tapu Lele for its supporter grabbing effect with Wonder Tag the following turn. So it's useful for that. You're, you can chain Pokemon with it and find other supporters with your Olivia. I think that is inherently powerful. It can also help search out evolutions though, which I think is great, especially in a format with cards like Gardevoir GX, uh, Noivern GX, uh, you know, and uh, Charizard GX. I mean, there's just more evolved GXs coming out. And of course, there's all the stage ones. And you have Ninetales GX, you know, Umbreon GX, Espeon GX. There's just lots of evolved GXs that this supporter can also grab. So not only does it help you set up on the first turn of your game, I mean, you could grab Tapu Leles, you could grab Drampas, Tauros, you know, whatever. It can also help you set up your evolved Pokemon. So I think Olivia does have some utility and might be seen in some decks down the road. Maybe not right away, but maybe, you know, uh, maybe after rotation. I mean, this card could be seen in some decks. Now, it is a little underpowered, which is the reason why I have it as the fifth best supporter. You know, it's not fantastic. Bridget will continue to see play in most decks as the setup supporter of choice. That being said, I think Olivia does have some niche use just because it can grab the evolved Pokemon as well as the basics. Also like Pokemon Fan Club, I like that it puts the GXs into your hand so that you can play their ability effects from hand, unlike Bridget, which puts them straight from the deck to the bench. So Olivia going at number five on our list of top supporters from Burning Shadows. Number four. We have Plumeria. Nice full art Plumeria that Darian was able to pull. This card looks totally sweet. Of 
course, Plumeria, that troublemaking supporter, discard two cards from your hand in order to discard an energy card attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Now, this supporter, I think, you know, the top four I consider all to be pretty good, and they're all going to see play. I think Plumeria definitely has a niche. It discards an energy from anywhere on your opponent's side of the field. Of course, you do have to discard two cards from your own hand, but you know, there are some decks in which case that is a good thing. I mean, some decks like to have things in the discard, right? And Plumeria can help get them there. Um, but also just having that ability to just pick off energy from wherever you want on your opponent's side of the field is great for some kind of decks. I mean, the, the kind of mill decks, your hazing decks, your decks that try to just deplete the opponent of resources. Plumeria, I think, is going to be an asset to these kinds of archetypes. If we think about the Lapras GX deck from last year, if we think about those disruptive Sylveon GX decks, I think Plumeria will find her way into those kinds of decks and will fulfill that niche very, very well. Team Flare Grant, obviously, kind of a point of comparison as far as a competitor for deck space with Plumeria, but Team Flare Grant can only discard energy from the active, where Plumeria can discard energy from anywhere on your opponent's side of the field. It used to be that playing around Team Flare Grant was pretty easy because you could just build up an attacker on the bench and you knew that your energy were relatively safe on the bench. Your opponent would have to hit heads on a crushing hammer in order to disrupt the energy that you were building up on the bench. You also knew that your opponent could not Lysander and Team Flare Grunt in the same turn, so your energy were relatively safe on the bench. Plumeria kind of makes that not true. Plumeria can search out those energy on your opponent's bench and discard them. So it makes just disruption decks that much more powerful, which is why I've placed Plumeria at the number four spot in our list of top supporters in Burning Shadows. Coming in at number three, we have Kiawe. Kiawe, I think, is a very strong supporter card. And it reads, search your deck for up to four fire energy cards, attach them to one of your Pokemon, then shuffle your deck. Your turn ends. Obviously, Kiawe is going to be very strong in fire type decks. And immediately, I think Kiawe will see success in Volcanion, which is already an established archetype. Kiawe like I said in one of my other videos, is kind of like a reverse Nitro Tank GX, where Nitro Tank GX is a powerful GX attack from Turtonator that could take five fire energy from the discard pile, attach them to wherever you want on your field. Kiawe is a supporter card. You could grab it with Tapu Lele. You could play as many as you'd like during the course of the game, and it takes four fire energy from the deck and attach them to one Pokemon. Now, obviously it's not quite as good as Nitro Tank GX, but we can kind of compare it to Nitro Tank GX, and that is a turn ending effect that loads up your fire Pokemon with fire energy. Now it is a little bit worse off because it, attach, it attaches those four energy all to one Pokemon, making them a little susceptible to Tapu Lele, Gardevoir GX, etc. If there's any sort of Pokemon in play that can take advantage of a Pokemon with four energy attached to it, that Pokemon that hasn't even gotten to attack with those four energy, then it's going to be a little bit of a compromised board position, right? I mean, you attach four fire energy to one Pokemon, then they can get hit into before they ever get to attack. That being said, I think Kiawe is an amazing turn one supporter. Imagine Kiawe going first in a fire deck, Kiawe going first in a Volcanion deck, I think is very strong. And I think sometimes you might not even choose to attach all four fire energy to your Pokemon when you play Kiawe. You might decide to Kiawe for two fire. You might decide to Kiawe for three fire, right? Because that way you can still charge up your Pokemon on the first turn of the game without leaving them as susceptible to Tapu Lele and the likes of maybe Gardevoir GX, Lugia EX, things like that. Right, so I think you might start to see plays where where players, you know, decide to Kiawe for less than the full amount because you really don't need four fire energy on a Volcanion EX. That being said, a turn one Kiawe for four fire energies onto a Turtonator GX is extremely intimidating. Still got my Turtonator EX GX over here for reference. If you do a turn one Kiawe onto a Turtonator, right? Turtonator can just start firing off Bright Flames as early as turn two. 
If you use a turn one Kiawe onto a Turtonator, right, going first, and then imagine your opponent gets one turn, now all of a sudden you can Bright Flame. If you have a Choice Band attached, you discard two Fire Energy, you do 190, right? That's going to knock out almost every basic Pokemon in the game, right? So 190, and then at that point you've discarded two Fire, which you attached four, so now you have two fire remaining on Turtonator GX. All you have to do is manually attach to Turtonator the following turn, and you could Bright Flame for 190 again. That's all because of a turn one Kiawe. Now, the benefit of Kiawe is that you can Kiawe on the first turn going first, but Nitro Tank obviously is an attack, so you cannot use it while going first. So Kiawe fulfills that niche and allows Volcanion decks, Turtonator decks to power up on the first turn even when they are going first, which I think is just an extremely powerful effect. I think Kiawe will be a staple card in all Volcanion decks, and I expect Volcanion to remain a popular archetype for the upcoming season. The number two supporter that I have chosen from the Burning Shadow set is Acerola. I think, that, I mean, first of all, this art is awesome, just a super cool full art card. Darian was able to pull in one of his boxes, but I think Acerola is just a super powerful card. It reads, put one of your Pokemon that has any damage counters on it and all cards attached to it into your hand. This is like a scoop up Cyclone, but it's a supporter, right? Scoop up Cyclone was an ace spec. It was an item card. Ace specs you could only use one of, uh, one of in your deck, right? So scoop up Cyclone just picked up any Pokemon in play and you brought all the cards into your hand. It's like a super scoop up, right? So Acerola is kind of has got that super scoop up effect. Scoop up Cyclone, A-Spec. You can only play one of them in your deck, right? Uh, super scoop up has the same effect. Pick up a Pokemon and uh, put all the cards attached to it into your hand. However, you have to flip a coin for it. Acerola is a supporter card and allows you to pick up a Pokemon with damage counters on it and all cards attached to it into your hand, meaning it can be used multiple times per game. I think Ace Roll is very powerful just because it takes an effect in the game, picking a Pokemon up and bringing all the cards in your hand, which is a provenly proven to be a powerful effect. I mean, Scoop Up, Super Scoop Up has seen effect, uh, success in many decks throughout the years that it has been legal. I used it in my regional winning Landers Crobat deck uh, if Acerola had been legal back in that format, I would have definitely played an Acerola in that deck just because it's such a powerful effect. Maybe Acerola will see more success in expanded format where Versus Seeker can retrieve Acerola and play the same one of supporter multiple times throughout the course of a game. Could definitely see play in a deck like Toad Bats, Land Bats, it could see play in Decidueye decks, especially, um, except, of course, Force of Giant Plants is rotating, so maybe not after Worlds, it won't be seen in Decidueye decks. But just the ability to pick up a Pokemon and all cards attached to it into the hand, super powerful. I love that you get to keep the energy attached to that Pokemon, keep any tools. Obviously, it goes great with my boy Tapu Koko here. Still got these Tapu Kokos over here in the studio. I'm going to continue showing them off. Obviously, Acerola goes well with this deck as well and just allows you to reuse that arrow trail ability throughout the course of the game. So I think Acerola just fulfills a really, really cool niche and just allows certain archetypes to exist and thrive that wouldn't be successful otherwise. I also think that Acerola can just be played in a number of decks. Uh, it can be used to pick up basic Pokemon like Drampa. It can be used to pick up evolution lines like Gardevoir GX. I think that its playability is just so widespread. It could be used in any deck that wants to tank a hit and glance it off. And just because of that utility, being able to be used in a number of different archetypes, which is why I've ranked it so highly on my top supporters of Burning Shadows. So... Acerola is number two, and I bet you all can guess what the top supporter of Burning Shadows is. That's right, it's our man, Guzma. Guzma. Switch your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active Pokemon. If you do, switch your active Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon. Now this card is just so, so, so powerful. It's like a Lysander, right? I mean, 
RIP to Lysander. Lysander is rotating, but we do have Guzma. And Guzma is just a Lysander effect. We get to pick one of the opponent's bench Pokemon, bring it into the active. We know how game-winning this effect is. Lysander won just so many games during its existence in standard format and will continue to win games during its existence in expanded format. Guzma is going to be that game-winning card in standard format. In games where you have to sycamore all of your copies of Guzma away on the first turn of the game, you are going to be an unhappy camper, right? Because Guzma is going to be the card that you search for with Tapu Lele to close out games, to pick off the last prize that you need off your opponent's bench, to pick off that weakened Pokemon that you'd already hit into, to pick off that weakened Pokemon GX just to finish things off, right? Guzma is that game-winning card. But Guzma is more than that because Guzma allows you to switch your Pokemon as well. I mean, this has a couple of implications. First of all, it means that decks will have to play free retreaters, right? I mean, usually you use Floatstone to activate a Pokemon, give them free retreat, right? And Floatstone and Guzma have great synergy. Just because you can play Guzma, promote your Pokemon with the Floatstone, and then retreat back into whatever attacker you would like. It also requires players to think ahead. Who do I promote for turn, especially if I'm going for the game-winning Guzma, right, so that I can switch into the right Pokemon that I need to attack and win the game. So it's going to change the way that we play the game a little bit in that regard. It's also going to change the way that we build our decks just because we need Pokemon with free retreat to take advantage of this game-winning Lysander effect. That being said, Guzma's switching effect also just has a huge benefit to a number of archetypes. First of all, Volcanion needs a switching effect, right? Volcanion's Volcanic Heat attack says that Volcanion EX cannot attack on the following turn. Guzma brings that Volcanion to the bench after it's used Volcanic Heat and allows it to fire off another Volcanic Heat attack if you are able to get that Volcanion back into the active. Obviously, probably going to happen if you have a Floatstone somewhere on your board. You can just Volcanic Heat, Guzma, bring up something else, promote your free retreater, retreat back into Volcanion, the same Volcanion, and you can Volcanic Heat again, since bringing a Pokemon to the bench removes all effects on that Pokemon. So Guzma is great in Volcanion. Guzma is also great in a deck like Greninja. Greninjas all have free retreat, and Guzma allows you to use uh, giant water shrieking in situations that you wouldn't be able to use it previously. So, say you wanted to go up and bubble with the Froakie in your Greninja deck, right, to try and stall for a turn. Typically, you would then, say you, you hit the Paralyze, your opponent couldn't do anything, then typically you would have to retreat the Froakie, right, promote a Greninja, you could only get one Water Shuriken off the following turn, even if you had two Greninjas into play. Now with Guzma, imagine you can go up and bubble, right, hit the Paralyze, then you could play Guzma. You could bring something else up into the active position, switch into your Greninja, you could use Giant Water Shuriken, and then use your Retreat, bring up a different Greninja break, and you could Giant Water Shuriken again. Likewise, if you have three Greninja break in play, it allows you to use Giant Water Shuriken three times, potentially. You could Giant Water Shuriken once, Guzma, bring up a second Greninja break, Giant Water Shuriken again, then retreat, and then bring up your third, and Giant Water Shuriken a third time. I mean, that's potential 180 snipe damage being done to the bench now, or done to wherever you would like on your opponent's side of the board. Now, you know, granted, Greninja Break does not typically set up three Greninja Breaks all on the field at the same time with three Water Energy on your hand, ready to use Giant Water Shriek in three times, but the option is there, and Guzma gives us that option. Guzma is number one on our list of supporters because Guzma will be played in every single deck this upcoming year, and I say that uh, pretty confidently. I think Guzma will be played probably as an average as a three of since versus seeker is not going to be in standard format anymore i suspect there to be at least two most likely three guzma in every single deck that's made so that rounds out our top eight 
supporters in Burning Shadows. Thank you all for watching. Let me know what you think of my ranking in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, and thanks for checking it out. Peace.